in the series on the one another's as we prepare to come to the table to prepare our hearts. And if you turn with me to 1 Peter uh, chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 5. Being two verses, why don't we stand? This is the living word of God. First Peter 5, 5 and 6. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Amen, Lord, we come before you. We ask that you would prepare us through your spirit to come and commune with you and to delight in you and your precious word. And we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Well, last Sunday in the sermon on serving in the family as unto the Lord, we saw how we are to submit as unto the Lord with, you know, to those that the Lord also uh, has put over us and even to those around us. And, you know, dear family, being humble is very hard for all people, since pride is at the root of much or all of of what we do and think. Self very easily becomes our focus. It very easily can. And it's only by the grace of God that we are liberated, that we are delivered uh, from this slavery to ourselves and uh, to our pride. And yet believers who are redeemed and being changed by the grace of God can know the great blessing there is in being submissive to one another. There is great blessing in that. We are to submit to one another, not only to those called by God, who are called by God to lead, but really uh, to one another, it's saying here. We are to clothe ourselves with humility, it says. In other words, put that on. Put on the humility that is possible by the grace of the Lord Jesus. Rather than pride, certainly, because true submission as unto the Lord is... Uh, less possible. In fact, it's hindered if pride is ruling in our hearts. It's hindered. Well, how is submission shown? Just a few thoughts here. First of all, by teachability, I think, a teachable heart, meaning from anyone. So it's also a willingness to listen to correction. Here are these verses from Proverbs. Proverbs 12, verse 1, whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. Proverbs 13, 18, poverty and shame will come to him who disdains correction, but he who regards a rebuke will be honored. Proverbs 15, 5, a fool despises his father's instruction, but he who receives correction is prudent. So teachability, a willingness to listen and receive correction is necessary to submit to one another. It's one sign of submission as unto the Lord. And also accepting exhortation, accepting rebuke from one another. Uh, not being quick to be defensive, esteeming others better than ourselves, which is one of the one another's that we looked at some time ago. And God is merciful, and he is forgiving, and he has put us in families, praise God, and in this family, this body, so that we can grow in humility around people who are grieved by the impact of their own selfishness and pride, and who are aware and active in the struggle that we will always have uh, to oppose uh, the enemy. And it's good to remember that God opposes the proud, it says here. So we should have the right kind of the fear of God. And regarding our pride, uh, you know, fear of our pride, having pride, because having him oppose us can be a very fearful thing. This is the living almighty God. And he says he opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He is the almighty God. He knows all things. And so we can't hide, of course, our pride from him. We can maybe do that here some. And we should humble ourselves under his mighty hand and rejoice in the promise that he will exalt us. He will bless us in his perfect time and his perfect way. So the Lord desires this kind of heart, dear family. David said this in Psalm 51, verses 16 and 17. For you do not desire sacrifice, or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, O God, you will not despise. So you can sacrifice a lot, you can do a lot, uh, and think it pleases God, but unless your sacrifice is from a broken spirit or from a humbled heart, uh, those won't be pleasing 
to him. The prophet Micah asks some questions um, about what the Lord desires in Micah 6. And he said, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, 10,000 rivers of oils? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? And the inspired answer is this, verse 8, He has shown you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And so our example, of course, is the Lord Jesus, who humbled himself to the point of dying on the cross for us. And we see in the table as we come uh, the visible reminders of his sacrifice, the broken wafer of his broken body for us, the blood in the wine. And while being God, he humbled himself. He became a man and he died for us. He submitted to the will of his father. So this table is a place to rejoice, dear family, in our being united in Christ. And it's a reminder that our Lord walked in humility. And he's called us to do the same, to grow in humility toward one another. By his grace, certainly, with the result of godly submission to one another. So fellow members of the body of Christ, Let's walk in growing humility with one another and rejoice together now in this means of grace that we are about to receive, which enables us to know what it means to be humble and gives us the power to walk in humility and in submission to one another through the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus and by the power of his indwelling spirit. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for humbling yourself to become a man to suffer and to die in submission to the will of the Godhead and for your patience and your great mercy toward us in all our pride. Lord, you have redeemed us from the slavery to our pride. We thank you. And you are sanctifying us that we might grow in humility. And Lord, we know that we are to walk in humility toward one another and we fail at this often. We ask for forgiveness and may we together now learn to walk in humility Lord, we ask this and we come to your table in the name of the Lord Jesus, our example and our Savior. Amen.